Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Welcome to our special Cyber Monday live stream, kind of doing the spur of the moment. So last Friday, uh, our live stream got cut short. Our internet went out right in the middle of the live stream. Sorry about that. Very unfortunate. It sucks when you're at the whim of your internet provider. <laughs> so, um, but I'm just going to continue, today I'm going to continue on uh, working on our animated short, short Snow Bear. And uh, Dustin, if you can go to my screen real quick, I want to show everybody Jeez. where we're at. Whoops, hold on, Dick's, Nick's calling. Hello, Nick. Okay, it's, it might be because we had to plug in the receiver. All right, uh, is it super loud? Okay, hold on one second. I'll have Dustin. We're getting a loudspeaker buzz. You a loudspeaker buzz? So this is what we're going to be working on right here. I know we're getting a little bit of a buzz on our on our speaker. Yeah, we'll fix the sound momentarily. Dustin's going to take care of it. All right, Dustin's going to take over just for a second. You guys can look at the animation. So you should be able to hear me. Um, hopefully it won't be too echoey. As a matter of fact, I'll turn this off. There we go. Make sure. There we go. So this is what we're doing. So right now I've got this animation down to fours, which means each drawing is held for four frames. I want to get it down to where it's held for two frames, each drawing. So I need to in between each of these frames or each of these drawings. And we'll get the, we'll get the animation nice and smooth. This is where we're coming into a new uh, scene of Snow Bear and he's walking up this mountain, up this hill, and he hears some geese flying over and he looks up to look at the geese. That's what happens at the, at the end there. So he's looking up at the geese flying over. Before we get into that though, um, Dustin, let's do this. Let, let me have a, a we, have, we want to do the sale. I want to talk about all the sales. So right. let's pull up let's pull up the sales real quick. Uh, first, we're talking about the Cyber Monday pre-order. Yeah, so we've got a Cyber Monday pre-order, and so these are we've got three new classes coming out. We've got portrait painting, uh, digital painting, and mainly uh, traditional painting from uh, 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 Ken's Produso. Yes, from Ken's Produso, and it's in pre-order right now. We've like I said, we've got three classes, three courses coming up in pre-order, and that's 50, They're all fifty percent off. And if you saw um, Ken's last portrait drawing por uh, course, it was awesome. And so he's coming up, coming out with a portrait painting course, and it's just as good, if not better. I love this course, um, and Ken's ability to paint faces, portraits, busts, all of that is really unbelievable, and you're going to love it. So check that out. And then also, I've got a new course coming out. Um, We'll have the course done by January 1st, but you can pre-order it now, and that's animating on paper. There's been such a, a, a kind of a thirst for going back to the old ways, especially from young animators uh, who've ne never really been exposed to doing it the way I was doing it, you know, 20, 30 years ago at Disney. Uh, that is animating on paper. It's a lost art. It's a, it's a dying art, I should say. It's not lost yet. And I want to try to keep it alive. So I'm coming out with a course on animating on paper. And uh, I'm going to take you through how to flip paper, the pegs, uh, uh, what kind of paper to use, um, uh, flipping the paper, two drawings, three drawings, how to do in-betweens. I'm going to take you through charting. I'm going to take you through exposure sheets. 
i'm going to take you through all the old ways that we used to do everything and then in the process i'm going to teach you how to animate a bouncing ball we're going to animate a flower sack we're going to do some character animation we're going to do all kinds of stuff so it's going to be a lot of fun so that's going to be animating on paper comes out uh january 1st but you can uh pre-order it now and once again that's 50 percent off and then our next one is design stylization from David Coleman. And this is a great one. David is going to take you through his way of creating characters, stylization out of humans, animals, all kinds of great stuff. And um, if you've gotten any of David's courses from us, you'll know that this guy is second to none. He's awesome. He is one of the reasons why we have him on here. Well, his, his, his abilities and his his reputation and everything else in the industry is why we have him uh, have him on and i just think he's awesome so those are the three courses that we have coming out and you can get in pre-order so go on over to creatureartteacher.com and check them out and also we have ourselves a cyber monday prints yes so we've got sorry i got to keep looking over my shoulder then we got so many sales going on i can't remember them <laughs> so we've got we've got two tiger prints that i've done one is a, a, a print from a digital painting that i did a while back and the other one is a print from a watercolor that I did a while back we've had a lot of interest in these two images and so we thought we'd make them available and you can buy them as prints and uh, what's the uh, it's creatureartteacher.com slash prints hey that makes sense right so go on over and check that out and then also we have uh, cyber and Monday once again those are going to be signed so they will be signed and uh, for Cyber Monday, we have 10 courses that are just $5. Yes, so we've got 10 courses right now that are $5 each for Cyber Monday. And uh, I think there's a code for those. Um, are they just... There's a code for... Uh, there's a, there's yeah, a no, no, no. These are just regular $5 off, or $5 a piece. It's not $5 off, mind you. No, they're $5. $5. They cost $5. They cost $5. Yeah. I don't know how... Are we making money on these? I don't know how we're doing it. I don't know. But um, yeah, but the code you were talking about was the set was the sale code, which yeah. is Cyber 2022, and it gives you an extra 20% off. Yeah. So if you put it, yeah, yeah, uh, on things that are already on sale. That are already on sale. Yeah. So if you use code Cyber 2022, you get an extra 20% off off of your entire order. So I, I think that's pretty cool. And, and uh, what's that say on there? Save extra 20% off. Of all day on discounted uh, lessons, tutorials, brushes, brushes and, photo and photo packs. packs. Anything on the site. Sorry, yeah. I can't keep up. I can't remember all the sales that we have, and so I, I've got to I've got to look over my shoulder to uh, to check them out. I, also, I just draw. I, I just draw. Then we also have Cyber Monday art books, which uh, is uh, thirty percent off hardcover books, including the part two that's on pre order. And 50% off of 100 drawings book. And it end, and this sale ends tonight. Okay, so uh, in case you didn't hear that, it's our it's our book sale. It's our, in, oh, and, and if you're in the U.S., uh, you get free U.S. Uh, shipping. And the code for that is USA Books. Is USA Books. So if you type in USA Books for the code, you'll get free shipping if you're in the U.S. But it's... um. Uh, what is it? It's $30 off uh, hardcover books. Microsoft. So it's $30 off hardcover books. And 50% off 100 drawings. And 50% off the 100 drawings book. So sorry it was so sloppy getting these sales out to you, but sorry. We're, we're doing what we can right now because we have we have no mics. And the $30 off uh, is including the part two, not just the part one, but the pre-order for part two. As yeah, that includes yeah, uh, volume two which is in pre-order right now. And uh, first 500 of those gets a signed edition. And we still have the deal going on, if I recall, the, uh, mem of the uh, special membership deal. If you give one, you get one free. Yes. That is so, still going on. Yeah, we've, got a, a, we've still got the deal going on memberships. Buy one, get one free. If you buy a membership, you get one free. And uh, that's a pretty good deal because you can give it away. You can gift it to somebody. You can even turn it around and uh, finagle it to, to use it for yourself. So, um, check that out. I believe that is about it. Good Lord. That was a lot. Hey, it's Cyber Monday. What can I say? But uh, here we go. So, this is, let's jump back over to the screen, which we have. Which we did. So, um, which we have. Um, this is, let me show you what the original storyboard was. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. 
This is the original storyboard. I'm going to play this. Oh, it was only, oh, <laughs> I never timed it out. So let me come down here. So here, this is him coming up the mountain. This was the original storyboard. And I realized the amount of time that I gave the bear, I needed, I needed to, to increase the, the, the distance. So getting rid of that layer, I backed, him, I backed him way down the mountain and brought him way up. And it makes for a more dynamic scene shot. So this is him coming up the hill. And then he slows down because he hears the geese and he looks up. All right. What I love about this shot is the depth. We get to play with depth. We get to play with perspective. All of that kind of stuff. It makes for a more dynamic shot while animating. And so I've already gone through the process of figuring out the pacing, figuring out the perspective, where his feet go in perspective, all of that, which can be kind of daunting. But if you break it down um, the way that I broke it down, which is one foot, one foot, one foot, and just worked him forward, and then you break down the drawings from there, it makes it a bit easier. So that being said, let's jump back to the beginning. We're going to make our first in-between right here. Here it is. So I'm going to zoom in on that. Andrew uh, Sharp on Facebook uh, says, Hello, Aaron. Uh, I was wondering if uh, you could talk about your evolution as an animator. What were some of the struggles? What were some of the things you wish you did differently? You know, I don't know if there's... Uh, so the question was, what were some of the struggles as, you know, my development as an animator? And what do I wish I would have done differently? I don't know that I wish there is anything I would have done differently. I think I went through the process of becoming the animator that I am now in the same way that a lot of animators do, which is just mileage. You just got to go through the mileage. Um, but that being said, uh, what, you know, some of the struggles for me uh, in the beginning, I was very caught up. And this is something that a lot of young animators go through. Uh, I was very caught up in the mechanics. I was really worried about how to move stuff and in the process of worrying about that I was sacrificing performance I was so worried about how to move something that the performance became stiff and once I started thinking more about performance and the acting and the emotion and let and I and my drawing got better I mean this is you know becoming a, a good draftsman is a lifelong endeavor so once my drawing got to the point where uh, I could get those emotions out more more fluently, I guess. I think of drawing as a, like language, and you know, the better you get at language, the more the better poetry you can write. I use this analogy a lot, and so the better you can draw, the you know, the the more beautiful drawings you can create. Um, and so, so once I got to a point where I could draw better, then the animation got better because. I was able to express myself and the emotions better. And the mechanics really kind of became secondary. The mechanics, you know, when you, uh, um, Ollie Johnson, one of the nine old men, he always used to say, um, animate what a character's feeling, what a character's thinking. Don't animate what they're doing because what they're feeling, what they're thinking will dictate what they do. And the mechanics all of a sudden become secondary because you're thinking about what they're feeling and that drives the movement of the body or the head or the expression or whatever it is. And so once I started doing that, then it became easy. I it shouldn't say easier. It became less hard. And uh, may, actually, I even take that back. Maybe it wasn't less hard. It just became better. My animation became better. My poetry that I'm trying to write through animation got better and I know it maybe it sounds a little pompous when I say I'm creating poetry but I try to think of it that way I try to think of you know think of it as music even you know you're creating music you can't the better the, the once you understand the notes better once you understand the chords better once you real understand the relationship from one note to the next how to read music all of that your your music will will grow right and your ability to create music will grow. And it's the same 
with animation, once you understand the drawing. And so that for me was the biggest development in my animation. This is a long-winded answer to your question. My, you know, it, it's the development of my drawing over time. And I'm still developing my drawing. Even at 54 years old, I'm still developing my drawing. It's always, always going to, I'm always going to be working at it. Sally asks, uh, what are the books about for the uh, art book? Uh, they're, they're, they're just basically portfolio books of my art. So it's, it's my art. Actually, let me go get one. So, for those of you that don't know, this is my the art of anim animation or the art of Aaron Blaze. Oh, right here. There you go. This is volume one, and it's literally. Let me turn around. Um, it's it's all a whole. It's a big selection of my art over the last twenty years or so. Uh, but I've got so much that we. I've decided to do a volume two. There's a lot of art that didn't go into this book. And it covers my, my work as, as a designer for studios, my personal work, animal drawings, all kinds of stuff, character designs. And then this is my book of 100 drawings, and it's literally that. It's 100 drawings, ink drawings, for my sketchbooks. So there's that. So that's the, those are the books. And then, you know, the volume two is, is another portfolio book. So we're just doing in-betweens here. I, I really like Bob Iger. Uh, I got to know Bob Iger personally when I was at Disney, and uh, I really respect him. I think he really cares about the employees at Disney. He cares about the customers. Um, he, I think, you know, the board loves him. Um, I think it's very good that he's back. I know the company's taken a, you know, a big hit. The stock has dropped 40%. In the last couple of years, and um, and not that you should always judge the performance of a company by its stock price, but I mean that they need something to judge it by, and that's de <coughs> definitely the the closest thing you can use. But I think you know, I was reading an article uh, from uh, uh, I can't remember her first name, but Disney's granddaughter, who's a very large shareholder. And, um, and she, her, she had a unique perspective, not a unique, because I think other people share her perspective. She wasn't super happy with the way that Bob Iger left right during the pan, right when the pandemic was starting. Um, but I think she's happy that he's back. She wishes him well. Um, but some of the things she said that I think Bob will do, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited for is going back to being more concerned about the employee and the customer and not the bottom line because when you can when you change the philosophy of the company uh, the bottom line will happen um, when everyone else is happy and I think that's kind of where they need to go is getting back to making the employee uh, happy and wanting to be there and not having to have two jobs you know, when you when you work at a company and you have to make, have work two jobs just to get by, there's a problem there, and uh, and Disney, Disney's in that in that right now, and um, so who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm very ideal, idealistic too, so <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. You know, I, I think Bob's great and I think he he cares, but I know he also has to answer to the board. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Andrew 
Andrew Sharp asks, uh, can I ask what your thoughts are on rough animation? Uh, was there a stage where uh, you were a rougher animator? Uh, what would you say are some of the pros and cons of rough animations? Well, I mean, I, this is my rough animation. I've gotten cleaner over the years since I've gone digital. When I was uh, working hand-drawn, this is hand-drawn, when I was working on paper, I should say, um, I tended to be a little bit rougher. Um, and I'm also working a little bit cleaner rough just for this production. And depending on, and you're looking at the, the second pass. If I show you the first pass, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Ooh, that was juicy. Juicy. That was juicy. So here we go. So let me turn this off, turn this on. Um, right here. So these, this is my first pass on this. So I, I, my first pass is rough. See that? See how rough that is? That's rough animation. But then I go through and I tie it down. So if I play this, I'm zoomed in. This is how I figure it all out first. Okay? So and this is how I would do it on paper. And then I come through. Whoops. And I tie it down. There's, there's the rough. There's the, clean, the tied down version. So I always start with a rough pass to work out that, that action. And then I'm able to work it all out after that. But my, I do have to admit, my, my, uh, my roughs have gotten a little cleaner since I've started working digitally. I'm not sure why that is. Next got a uh, question from Twitch. Um, have you seen the Sea Beast on Netflix? I enjoyed it, but something about the Sea Beast's face kept reminding me of Toothless. Have you had um, Have you had to redesign a character because it seemed too sim similar to another character? I've never had to redesign a character because of that, and I agree with you. I thought he felt like uh, Chris. It's Chris Sanders. Those are Chris Sanders type designs that you're talking about when you're talking about Toothless. Um, it wasn't Chris Sanders that designed the Beast, the Sea Beast. But um, but yes, there is there's definitely influence there. I think um, I've never had to. I, 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 we did have to change a voice. I know in uh, uh, I can't for, I can't remember her name, the woman that did the voice for for Grandma Willow well-known, very small uh, uh, actress. She's in... Oh, shoot. Anyway, the woman that did the voice for Grandma Willow, we originally cast to do Tanana, and um, the executives, after we had cast her and got her to record a few rounds, felt that she sounded too much like Grandma Willow, so we had to recast her. So we had to recast Tanana, is what I'm saying. I keep my hands clean, for one thing, and uh, I don't know. Other than that, wash your hands. <laughs> Just let it soak in the sink for a couple of minutes. Uh, what's, what software is this that you're using? Oh, sorry. This is TV Paint software. So I do all of my hand-drawn animation now in TV Paint. I'm working on a Wacom Cintiq 32 Pro. So it's a 32 inch screen. And, uh, and then the software is TV Paint software. We actually have a deal uh, with TV Paint. So if you go on over to our website and if you become a member on our website, you'll get a code 
for TV Paint Software where you're going to get 30% off. And that amount off, off the cost of the software is basically the amount, it's almost the same as, as, the, uh, as the membership itself, so it, it almost pays for itself. It's really worth it, actually. Uh, before sitting down and drawing, uh, drawing out or animating a creature or animal, uh, do you go through reference videos or documentaries? Uh, what sorts of key points are you looking for at that stage? Uh, what was the opening line when I'm animating a character? Uh, when you're drawing out or animating a uh, creature or animal. Yeah. So um, I'm always trying to learn various animals. And so I, I've, got a, I've got kind of a visual library of the anatomy. But yes, if I can't find that animal uh, in the wild, you know, like a lot of our big cats and uh, a lot of stuff, you know, North American wildlife, we go and film them in person. We go to Yellowstone or we go to Africa and, uh, and we, Kenya, and we, we film them in the wild. And so that becomes our library and our base. We, we've got photographic reference and, and, and uh, 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 video reference. And, um, and so we pull from that. If I don't have, like say the polar bear, I haven't been able to capture polar bears in the wild. Um, so I pull up every documentary. I watch maybe three or four times the documentary Polar Bear, Disney's Polar Bear documentary, which is unbelievably beautiful. And I draw from that. I rarely, if ever, pull up uh, photographic reference. That doesn't do much for me. Photographic reference, video reference is always better. You're seeing that, that animal move in three dimensions. Um, I'm always looking at video reference over photographic reference. I don't, you know, the still image is just that. It's just a still image, and that's all you get. When you're watching video reference, you're seeing that character in three dimensions, and you're getting about 24 different images per second. So use it. And that's how I do it. How's our stream strength so far, Dustin? Uh, it's showing green so far. Oh, that's great. So far, so good. That's just great. I'm so happy. This is great for your face. So here we are, animating live. So we've done several. So now you can see that, that movement. Coming forward, that head swinging back and forth. I'm going to favor the drawing out here in the head, just in the head part, because he's going to change direction in the next drawing. Watch. See, he changes direction right there. So I want to favor it so it's not a, a harsh change of direction. says, just pre-ordered my volume 2 book. Time to clear this space on the shelf. <laughs> Zanjay! Hello?
So this is where it gets the most complex, is getting that snout in between the right way. Closing off all the lines. You gotta remember this is all blown up right now. This isn't the actual size. A uh, YouTube question. Is there any way to tag Dustin on the drawings uh, we made with his references? Enter it, Dustin. Um, if, it, if you're posting it through Instagram, uh, just tag me in with my uh, um, Instagram, which is uh, Dustin underscore Blaze. Uh, but if it's on uh, Facebook, um, should then, uh, yeah, just, I, I say just for Instagram for now. But yeah, uh, again, it's, uh, at Dustin underscore Blaze. Hopefully they can hear me. Dustin underscore Blaze on, on, uh, Instagram. Instagram. The old Instagram. Are you drawing each panel, or does it render it together for you? I'm drawing each and every panel. Oh, if you're talking about, well, I'm not drawing the backgrounds with every panel. So the backgrounds are held, but no, I'm drawing every character drawing, yes. So here's the actual size. So see how small he is? But you can see in that first bit, if I highlight just that you can see now we're getting nice and smooth when it gets to be on twos it gets nice and smooth do you have the ability to visualize scenes in your mind before you animate them yes i know that frank zetta had an almost photographic memory that could pull images out of the air this was mentioned in the documentary Fire and Ice. Yes. So I, I picture what I want before I animate it, and then I execute it. Now, that doesn't say, I, I don't just picture it in my head and start drawing it. I work it out. I, I thumbnail it first and work it out. And through the process of thumbnailing, I get a mental idea of what the animation is going to look like. Then I hold on to that idea, and I start animating. But I come, I come into a shot with an idea, with a mental image in my head of what I want it to be, and then I explore it and make it better through the thumbnail process. Uh, is it hard to do a lane walk? I, thought, I think she uh, meant limp walk, because uh, I tried to draw a tiger limping on its hind leg for uh, a little plot but it doesn't work. Can you please tell me what are the features of such a walking type? Well, you got to think about, once again, animating a limp is no harder than animating a character with no limp. You just have to think about what, the, what you're trying to get across. What's the emotion? What's the, what's the feel? So if your character's foot is hurting, what happens when you, if, if you have a limp? A limp is because something hurts, right? And, and you're, you're favoring it. So let's say if it's a back foot, like you're just saying, let's say it's the back right foot. When that back right foot comes down and, and touches the ground, first of all, it's not going to take all the weight. And if it doesn't take all the weight, that means the other foot has to come, come through and replace it much faster than the other feet. So that's why we have a limp. It's the, oh, oh, you know, it comes through quicker. So there's going to be a timing difference in the way that the feet work. But... Um, I mean, there's all kinds of limps, so I can't tell you exactly what your issue was right off the bat. But I can tell you that you need to look at video reference. You know, there's that. Um, but also feel it. What happens in a limp? And what happens in a limp is that you favor a certain foot, a certain leg, whether it's a front leg, back leg, whatever it might be. You favor it. And when you're favoring something like that, like I said, it's going to be replaced more quickly by another foot. 
it's going to uh, it's going to be uneven in its timing. So think about that. That's about all I can tell you right now without looking at your animation, but I don't have that ability. Jeff T. Cosola says, hey boys. Aaron <laughs> Howdy boys. Hey boys. Uh, do you feel today's uh, digital way of working and drawing is much easier than back when you only draw paper? Or is it just a different way of animating? I think it's easier. I think it's definitely more forgiving. Um, uh, it's definitely got its own, I'm not saying it's cheating or anything like that, I think, but there's definitely, I, I found that when I started working digitally, it, it, my, it, it changed my, it freed me up on my traditional work. My traditional work got a little freer, a little more, a little looser, because when I work digitally, I'm not afraid of ruining paper and, you know, I can just be free with it. And so that really freed me up. Um, that's why I love going back and forth. You know, my, my traditional way of working influenced my digital way of working. And then when I worked digitally, it inf went back and again and influenced my traditional way of working. That's very cool. All right, so we got the head swinging. I wanted this kind of overlap in the head as he's walking. So that's what you're seeing in the head right here. See how his head kind of turns? It over right there, it overlaps, drags a little bit right there. So you get this kind of, this feel in the head. I'm trying to get the shape of the head drawn in here first. Then I'll map out the nose, thinking about the arcs. Well, it's, there's no reason to do that. An oil painting course is a course on painting in oil. They're two completely different mediums. If you want to paint in watercolor, follow a watercolor painting course. Which I have. I've got a watercolor painting course on the website. But, you know, an oil painting course is made for oil painting. Uh, what's your favorite shot so far uh, on Snow Bear that you've made? Uh, probably the, on the whale shot, swimming underwater with the whales. I've got a lot more fun shots coming up. I'll show you. I'll show you in just a second here. Let me see what I have up right now. Okay. if it'll find it. There we go. So we've got this, him coming through, him walking along, he's on the ice right here. 
and then uh, he dives into the water. He's swimming up. He sees the whales, and the one baby whale comes back, and he comes forward. And this is my favorite shot. I had a lot of fun animating this. So they meet each other. Swim around each other. But then mom and dad come in and say, no way, pal. And they swim off. And he's left sad. And then he swims away. And then the next shot is this shot. This is the one we're creating right now. There's the rough animation right there. He looks up. And then there's the geese flying over. So that's it. That's what we're working on. And you got to see my favorite shot in there as well. go so what I want to do next is I'm just gonna play back this section because I want to see if that head change of direction is working I want to see if it's working out the way I want it to right after I finish this drawing here patience you got to have patience when you're doing animation uh, YouTube question. Any advice on how to keep your drawings cons consistent? Uh, do you use the method of animating only certain parts of the character when in between? Uh, like first the head, then the body, and so on? Not really. I don't really have a method. I just start, you know, probably usually in the section where, uh, especially in a walk like this, I just usually start at one side of the body and work forward. But keeping a character consistent really comes down to knowing the proportions of the character, building with shapes. You know, if I'm drawing, if I'm drawing Snow Bear, I start always start with a circle, let's say, and I know that you know Snow Bear is built to where his nose. He doesn't have much of a forehead. Polar bears are pretty smooth in the in the way their heads are shaped. So I build them out like so. And then I know I want him to have a brow because you can use the brow for expression. And then his eyes aren't huge, but they're a little bigger than a, a traditional polar bear. His nostrils work a certain way. The shape, I know the shape of the nose, which is shaped like this, kind of a fat triangle, like that. And then his mouth is relatively short compared to the length of the muzzle. And then uh, the the lower jaw comes in here and if you follow this line back that's going to feed into the cheek which is back here like so because that's part of the jaw line and the head comes back and his ears are down low like so and then right off of here there's a little kind of a beard that comes off and that comes down and off of there, off the back of the head, we have his neck. And that's kind of swells out. And a polar bear has a, has a long neck. There's his shoulders. And I can use that kind of beard under, you know, where all the hair comes down. I can use that to show the twist in the body if I want to do that, which I'm doing here. And that comes down to the shoulders. So I, I'm thinking about anatomy. I'm thinking about a lot of different things when I'm when I'm drawing him, but this but I draw him. I think about all these things every time I draw him, and that's how I keep him consistent. 
right here, there's a line that comes along that it's cut, it represents basically the cheekbone on the skull. And then I bring this in right here to kind of indicate the front and to show this, indicate this mass. What then, kind of animation hold are on, you? I'm still drawing. Sorry. That's all right. So here, so that, that snow bear right there. And that's how I just stay consistent with him. Sorry, go ahead, Dustin. Uh, what kind of animation uh, are you using for this scene? What kind of animation? Uh, yes, I believe what they're asking is like, is this a straightforward? Is it a uh, keyframe? Uh, it's it's kind of both. I, I, I animated it straightforward on 16s. So I was hitting just certain keys, animating that straight straight ahead, not straight forward, straight ahead, um, in order to kind of map out where he was going to be hitting, and then I break it down along the way. So right now I'm just breaking down the keys that are already there. Yeah, see that? Now we've got a nice smooth transition in the head turn. Let me bring that down to the right size. A YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. Uh, thanks for all your wisdom and courses you've uh, provided in the Lion King. 